Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 7th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women in World Affairs. On February 24th, 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in order to overtake the capital city and claim it as its own. Since then, more than a million Ukraine citizens have fled the war zone. Hundreds have died as a result of the attacks. Multiple countries have banded together to sanction Russia in opposition of Putin's decision to invade Ukraine. And even Switzerland, long known for remaining neutral during conflicts, abandoned its neutral stance to freeze all personal assets of Putin and all of his allies. This is serious. This is a fight to maintain the institution of democracy across the world. And while we're fighting to maintain democracy, we can't forget the people of Ukraine who are right there living out this tragic time in our history, especially the women. Today, we have a special guest, a woman living in Ukraine who had to make the daring escape to protect her family after the war broke out. Meet Natalia. Natalia has managed to escape Ukraine and she is in a safe place, but her journey was not easy. Natalia says it took 27 hours for her and her family to flee Kyiv and make it to the border of Hungary, where they finally found a way out of Ukraine. Welcome to the feisty, Natalia. I'm so glad you're safe now and, and that you can take the time to share your story. Can you back us up a little bit and tell us what was your life like in Ukraine before this disgusting war began? Sure. Uh, mm. Actually, you know, I was in Ukraine for half a year, and before that, I I was living in Malaysia. And uh, actually, I'm uh, quite a worldwide uh, citizen, so I was working for different country, uh, companies, like uh, in Japan uh, for a British company. So um, this time, we decided to come back with my husband um, to deliver our baby and stay in Ukraine. And he's a foreigner, so he's from Uzbekistan. Um, my husband loved Ukraine, so we decided to stay. We rented out um, an apartment. Uh, and uh, yeah, we just decided to, to leave there uh, again because I had my own apartment, but we rented out quite a bigger place for all of us and our family to come to visit. Wow, Natalia. Well, what happened after that first morning? How did you and your family manage to escape the world's war zone? Uh, actually, what happened that I found out um, in the morning, um, I got a news that um, airport Bur uh, Burispoli, the international airport in Kiev, was bombarded. And then same morning, I seen from my window um, um, fighter flights, you know, th those small flights that they... Um, uh, that they uh, just uh, was fighting, you know, like in, in the air. Uh, and uh, one of these uh, aircrafts, uh, it ju just was hit it and uh, um, it, it turned just next to our building, not just our building, but the, the building next to us. And it was scary. I just couldn't understand what's going on. And we were, you know, we were watching like a movie um all these um fighting aircrafts you know what they're doing and it it was just scary you know so we kind of uh, moved out of the window with like few few meters but still we were watching because we didn't know what to do and what's going on then uh news appeared and uh, we realized that uh it's because we live next to the one one of epicenters. So we were staying at the, the apartment where we were is next to Gostomil Airport. So and that area was bombarded completely afterwards in uh, the following days. So my mind was blurred. You no, know? I couldn't think normally what 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 should we do. 
But then the next day I knew I just want to leave as soon as possible because I already seen, uh, not just seen, we, we were uh, just under um, all these attacks and explosions. So explosions were uh, all over, you know, this kind of red sky and then poof you know so it just you 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 cannot sleep i was putting a pillow on um, on the air ears of my baby that she it can sleep but at least somehow she's always like boop, you know and again i need to put her to, to sleep so it, it just was and scary and uh, i don't know it was it was not a normal life anymore and uh, then 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 the next day i think or the second day as well i've seen tanks you know from my window so i'm just looking out and i see cars going 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 and then they coming back the, the same direction that they came from and then tank tanks are coming 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 oh my god it was so scary i mean um because you cannot control the situation you don't know what to do you know and uh i we've seen how our neighbors we ha had uh, lots of cars outside so we were staying in a um condominium so it's like uh how many floors like uh 12 floors uh building and cars disappearing so you're seeing like 40 cars now you see six cars so people are living somewhere and uh, they're making their decision but we couldn't leave because we didn't have our car we was renting uh, this car uh, and we kind of was stuck so it was it was the situation when i was definitely panicking and i didn't know what to do and and actually you know i had this um in my body I got uh, numb for some for some time, uh, so I couldn't move. Uh, I just realized that even when we decided that we are leaving, we found the car. Actually, we bought the car, and for crazy price, it it it's really overpriced. But we just wanted to leave, and we we had this opportunity at least to to buy it. Uh, I needed to pack and I couldn't. I just was lying down and I got some power nap. Again, in one hour, I got some other power nap because I, I couldn't control my body. I was panicking that crazy. So um, actually, we were staying just uh, on the border uh, of Kiev. Yeah. So uh, and the area we were staying in was perfect to live on the day one uh, because it was going this um, western direction but because we were leaving on 25th already uh, at 4 p.m uh, that road, wo road was bombarded so it was blocked and at least we knew that we didn't go that way because otherwise we we uh, were supposed to come back. We took the other road to the south and um, uh, uh, I was uh, scared because that area as well was bombarded. But what we did, um, yeah, we used like Google Maps, we used the ways uh, to check the information. And then uh, it was like, you know, we are going somewhere on the road. We see uh, cars are moving. Okay, we will go in that direction. If there's no cars, then we didn't go that direction. We was trying to go by uh, this kind of village roads, you know, like small roads. Um, because uh, in, in Kiev still, because we went back to Kiev in order to move, uh, we didn't know, you know, the best way. Uh, but we got lucky, so it was not bombarded that specific time. And um, what happened that because of stress, I am, you know, I'm breastfeeding my milk gun. So my baby was crying as a hell. I didn't have anything to feed her because she she's on uh, breastfeeding, you know. And uh, only after two 
hours, I think, or three hours we left uh, when I felt a bit like released that, hey, we, we actually went quite far, but still it was Kiev region, I would say, because we came back afterwards and there was no roads. Uh, so my milk came back and I was flooded with milk. I was wet completely, you know, you know it just like, this is how my body reacted. This is what I was saying, that I was numb. Uh, um, so it, the journey took 27 hours. So my husband was actually driving almost nonstop and he had red eyes. Uh, we went to a um, uh, little um, uh, resort city called Truskovets. My mom is from that city. And actually my mom was with us because she was um, helping us uh, with post-COVID situation. And you know, because I couldn't really, I didn't have enough straits as well in my body that time. So she came to, to help with cooking and some other things. So we went to her house, um, stayed there for one day or one day and a half. And then it took us additional 12 hours to go to the border. Borders were overwhelmed, especially Polish border. My friends moved uh, only, they were waiting like 56 hours to, to, to cross the border. Uh, other people 50 hours so it was quite long so we were we were searching for something else and finally we moved through Hungarian border in the night and we got lucky that it was quite quick. Natalia I'm so glad you made it out of there this is not an easy journey and I want you to know that we stand with you thank you for sharing your story with all of us at the Feisty please reach out and let us know if there's anything we can do to help. In other news, pay attention ladies. Some scientists believe a mass extinction event is now underway for the first time since the dinosaurs were wiped out 66 million years ago. According to Global Landscape Forum, the current rate of extinction is a biodiversity crisis and has been caused entirely by humans through their impact on the natural world since the industrial revolution. In 2015, journalist and author Elizabeth Colbert published a Pulitzer Prize-winning nonfiction novel called The Sixth Extinction, Extinction and Unnatural History, which made a meticulously researched case for why the next mass extinction is already happening. According to scientists, extinctions are a natural part of evolutionary life. It's estimated that more than 99% of all species that have ever lived on Earth are now gone. Another report released last week warned that unless global warming is dramatically slowed, billions of people and other species will reach points where they can no longer adapt to the new normal. The UN-backed report, based on years of research from hundreds of scientists, found that the impacts from human-caused climate change were larger than previously thought. The report warns that if the world exceeds 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming, the impact would be irreversible for hundreds, if not thousands of years. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, reports the warning that under all scenarios examined, Earth is likely to reach the crucial 1.5 degrees Celsius warming limit in the early 2030s. What's to blame for the climate change that will change our lives as we know it? Burning fossil fuels, cutting down forests and farming livestock. These actions add enormous amounts of greenhouse gases to those naturally occurring in the atmosphere, increasing the greenhouse effect and global warming. But what can we do? Let's talk to Erin Dorr, a member of the Bedford, Massachusetts chapter of Mothers Out Front, a national organization of moms mobilizing against climate change. Erin, welcome to the feisty. I'm worried. Climate change is a social issue that you advocate hard for. Can you describe what the world will be like if we don't take action right now? Yeah, great question. The big issue is that um, we're going to be seeing flooding. Polar caps, um, you know, that the polar caps are melting. We're hearing uh, examples or, or kind of timelines of when 
California and Florida may end up being overrun with water and really falling off into the ocean. Um, places like Africa, where it's hot, it's only going to get hotter. I'm in the Northeast, got a little bit more time on that projection, but we're having some, you know, some countries who really aren't a huge contributor to the large scale business, the mass manufacturing, the things that are really impacting, uh, you know, climate change and, and they're being hurt first and worst. So the deserts are drying up. There's gonna be, you know, less water available in certain areas and too much water in other areas. Um, we'll lose real valuable resources like uh, certain animals and plants that can't ever be recovered. Um, and once we hit that one and a half percent uh, degree of warmth, they're projecting it to take um, generations to try and uh, repair the damage. Wow, Erin. This seems very serious. I, I feel like it may be too late. Please, can you tell us what we can do to stop this from happening? You know, I love that question because there, it's it's multi-pronged answer. Some impacts we can do ourselves. Uh, some need critical mass, and some require. You know, it's we will often feel as an advocate and um, in this space, and as mom, um, you know, I feel like I'm responsible for so for making this change. And I'm just one small part of it. But if, you know, businesses and lawmakers, you know, start to take action and, and you join me and they join me and we can all really pull together to make some of these bigger systemic changes. Um, some of the things that we can do individually to make a positive impact, switch off fossil fuels. Um, instead of using gas, cooking in your gas stove, use an induction cooktop, um, switching to electric vehicles and becoming a whole lot more uh, cost effective than they used to and lots of options. Uh, use public transportation or better yet, walk, bike, get in that energy and exercise too. Um, you know, one of the other easy things that we can do personally is compost, removing that food waste out of the incineration or, or landfill cycle uh, actually puts those energies and, and nutrients back into the ground that can help foster new growth. Um, eating less meat. You might've heard of uh, meatless Mondays. So fun fact, by skipping meat one day a week, Americans could save about a 100 billion gallons of water or enough gas to fill up every car in Canada and Mexico as well as saving 3 million um, acres of land that would equivalent to the size of two Delawares. Um, plus, when you remove meat from your wallet, from your uh, eating habits, it, it actually has a really strong impact on your wallet. It's more expensive to eat meat. Now, I'm not telling you go all in on being a vegetarian. I, I, I still like my meat at time to time, but if we can eliminate it just one day a week, it's gonna make a big, big difference. And then on a broader scale, if you, you know, look to local advocate, uh, activist organizations for advocacy, like Mothers Out Front, where you can find other concerned people who are like-minded and, and can help you amplify your voice. And there's safety in numbers and it's more fun to, to you know, talk about this stuff in, um, in, in groups. Moms get stuff done, moms don't quit. Um, on the broader scale, we need to talk to legislators, local, regional, state level, your town, everything on up, and urge them to take action on these environmental issues, which also impacts our frontline and environmental justice communities. Um, there's a really big social component to this that um, hurts those that aren't um, necessarily the ones causing the issue. So at the end of the day, I can't reverse climate change myself, uh, but if we all join in together, we got a shot. And I don't want to leave our children in unlivable climate. Thank you so much, Erin, for coming to the FICE to help us understand the importance of changing our habits and paying attention to how our choices impact the future of our children. 
ladies, we have to do better. We wouldn't leave our kids in any situation that would be a danger to them. Not acting to improve our climate and reduce global warming is the same thing. It's the same thing. In other news, an Ohio man was arrested after he allegedly held a gun to his girlfriend's head because he was angry that she was receiving phone calls with job offers. According to WTAP, after noticing his girlfriend was receiving multiple phone calls with work opportunities, Brandon Bruce grabbed her by the face, hit her, and kicked her. When she threatened to call the police, Bruce grabbed a gun, cocked it, held it up to her head, and told her, do it. The fight was caught on security camera. Bruce was arrested and taken to the Washington County Jail, where he is charged with ag aggravated menacing, two counts of domestic violence, and having weapons under disability. Wow. So Bruce is mad because his girlfriend now has opportunities to support herself. So Bruce, would you rather that she be completely dependent on you for everything? Would that make you feel like she can't go anywhere? Or were you really hoping that the phone calls are from men so that you could abuse her for sneaking around on you? Anything but a job. A job represents independence for women, a chance to support ourselves and not have to put up with abuse from weak-minded men who can only keep a woman if she fears for her life. Who told you that forcing someone to do what you want is an ex exhibition of power? Oh, it was patriarchy. Listen, that's not true. The true exhibition of personal power is when someone chooses to stand with you because they value you and not because they fear retribution. A woman will love you without you having to force her to. Maybe no one in your family ever loved you. And now you feel you have to strong arm women into giving you the love you could never retain. It isn't love if it's forced. Give her a reason to choose you and give her the option to do so. That's how you can tell if it's real love. It's time for a break. Well, is losing your virginity really a thing? Is there a difference between Adderall and meth? Answer to these questions and more right after the break. Be right back. My heart for homemaking flows through my hands into each knot of my work. My name is Natalie and I'm the owner and maker of Fringe and Free. I started my business because I wanted more home decor handmade with natural elements. My style is earthy, minimal, and warm. I want to express life, peace, and joy. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? Casey LaCourt, a mom on TikTok, replied to a video challenge a year ago and watched in amazement as her video went super viral. The topic of her video was so controversial that it has resurfaced again and under heavy debate. Casey has five daughters and what she decided to teach her daughters about their first time having sex is causing quite a stir. Let's talk to Casey. Welcome to the Feisty. Can you tell us what you said on this 60 second video that made you TikTok famous? Yes, I can. Thank you, T. Erica, for having me on the Feisty. I'm very excited to be here. Um, so basically, it was a TikTok video. Somebody said, what's something weird about the way you raise your children or that other people might consider weird? And I stitched it and was just, I teach my daughters. There's no such thing as virginity. It's a patriarchal concept. It's just something someone decided was a thing way back in the day. And um, it does not have any bearing on your value as a person and especially as a woman. Um, you know, I've gotten a lot of a lot of blowback from this, obviously, but um, it, it's it's I think it's important. It's important for our children, not just our daughters. I have five daughters, so that's where I hone in. But it's for all of our children to understand consent, body autonomy, that one act does not define a lifetime of who you are. And I think a lot of women um, mm -hmm. my age and older have we're taught that, you know, so you lost your virginity and your, everything's about your virginity. No, every act should be special. Every encounter should be thought out and consensual. And um, it's not just the first time. And it's odd because it's the only time we do that with a, the, the first time you have sex is your virginity. And um, 
And it's just, it's made into such a large thing. And I, I don't believe it is. I don't think it's real. I think it's, it's just a concept and, and it, it's unnecessary. Yes, Casey, it is absolutely unnecessary to offer a woman a milestone that is defined by a man placing his jiggly parts inside of her. Why does that even matter? A girl does not become a woman when a man touches her. A man's penis is not a magic wand ushering in womanhood. Everyone watching, consider giving your daughter the gift of self-worth and teaching her that her major milestones in life should have nothing to do with a man. Moving right along, a 24-year-old U.S. woman has appeared in court accused of killing and mutilating a man during sex while high on crystal meth. Taylor from Wisconsin was charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilated in a corpse, and third-degree sexual assault. She strangled the 25-year-old man from Green Bay, Wisconsin, then dismembered his body. Taylor said she blacked out during the sex act and just went crazy and started strangling the victim. She then told police she put his head and penis in a bucket. What? How? What is it about meth that causes people to commit these horrific crimes? I once saw a video where a man explained that Adderall was the same as meth. And then I remember visiting a pharmacy where the pharmacy tech told me that he had just transferred from, from another location near a university. He said, in this location, everyone picks up inhalers in the spring. But at the other location, every other college girl is picking up Adderall. But if Adderall is legal, why is meth not? Today, we have Dr. Kelly on the show to explain the difference between Adderall and methamphetamine. Well, first of all, to Erica, hello again, and thank you so much for having me on your show again. It's a great honor to be here. So your question is really interesting. So um, amphetamines are a class of drugs that are used to treat other medical conditions like ADHD and some other things. And so um, Adderall is a type of amphetamine. And so we frequently think of Adderall um, as a prescription, but it's an amphetamine and amphetamines are uppers. They affect your brain. They affect our concentrations, our focus, our moods, all of that stuff. Methamphetamine is a very, very close chemical cousin to amphetamine. So methamphetamine has a very similar chemical structure to amphetamine. It really it's almost the same drug, but there's one little difference in the chemical structure. And that little difference means that methamphetamine crosses into the brain much more easily and much more quickly than amphetamine. So methamphetamine compared to Adderall has a much more profound effect on the human brain. And that's what causes all of these psycho events that we hear about after people use methamphetamine. So the intense cravings and the weird behaviors and the um, hallucinations and all of those things are due to the fact that methamphetamine gets into the brain so much more easily and much faster than amphetamine does. Oh, so it's the speed of the drug's impact on the brain that causes the drug usually to get so high that they lose touch with reality in a way that they become psychotic. Ugh. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. Appreciate your insight again. In other news, good news. We held our very first life skills training for women. Presented by The Feisty News, the free class happens every first Saturday of the month and is designed to teach women life skills to overcome life's tricky circumstances. Our first night was amazing. We had awesome mental health professionals leading the discussion, sharing the stories of how they survived the pandemic and what they had to do to keep their own peace of mind. I even shared my own pandemic story that I just learned how to bounce back from. I really learned life-changing tips from these women, I swear. You can watch the replay on Facebook and make sure you don't miss the next Life Skills Training Class for Women, April 2nd. Subscribe to thefeistynews.com to receive the Zoom link to attend. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty.